You're watching Swipe on the show this week. The March of the Makers, we meet the next generation of British inventors. How cutting edge tech could solve the mystery of flight MH370. We're going back to the future with a hoverboard. And it's time to face your demons in our games review. Hello and welcome to Swipe, this week from the British Invention Show in London. Wouldn't it be great to come up with an idea that could change the world? Britain's produced some of the greatest inventors of all time, so Tim Berners-Lee, Alexander Graham Bell, for example. But who are today's homegrown geniuses? Stuart's been finding out. Here at the British Invention Show, there's certainly variety. Products for parents, advances in horticulture, and inventions that are more in the novelty section. British inventors are full of ideas. More than 200,000 applications for patents were made in 2013. But is enough being done to support homegrown talent? Kane Kramer should know. He's the man who came up with the digital audio player. If you're a little inventor, you know, you may be out of work. You may be a housewife, you may be a doctor or professor in between projects, and you may have come up as an individual with a brilliant new idea. And at that point, where do you go? Where do you take it? There's very, very little. Even the process of invention uses cutting-edge technology these days. This is Gravity Sketch, a 21st century way of bringing your thoughts to life. The inventors, a team from France, Mexico and the US, met in London, and the project was conceived in the capital. I think London is a pretty exciting place to be at the moment. There's like more and more uh, young hardware and software startups that are uh, like starting here. And you don't have to go to uh, the Silicon Valley or like uh, to uh, Boston area to be able to start these kind of projects. It can happen right here in London. So you've got your bright idea. What next? You've got to build a prototype, market the product and get people interested. Protecting your idea is important too, but it can be expensive. There is so much uh, innovation going on in the UK, but the patent, to get a patent, costs you on average about £20,000. So even if you're just doing the design and spending the money on actually doing the work, you've still then got to find the other money for marketing plus protection of your product, which is very hard for a lot of people to find that sort of money. UK patent rules were tweaked at the beginning of October to make things easier for British inventors. Whether it comes from England or whether it comes from Timbuktu, what does it matter? What we need to be able to do is harness the brilliance and the brains of the world. All the solutions for the planet are probably out there now, but we actually don't have the engines to actually move this stuff forward fast enough. Inventors agree that amazing ideas are out there. It's up to the creative minds of the future to make them a reality. Stuart Duggan, Sky News. Well, talking of the future, you're joining me now in this mock classroom surrounded by budding young inventors, and we're lucky enough to be able to speak to multi-award winning inventor, Bill Curry. Bill, Hi. thanks for joining us. Now, you spend a lot of your spare time visiting schools and helping children to develop their innovative size, don't you? Yes, I go around schools in Croydon, and I start a club called Bite, which is being invented through education, and uh, they join up, and uh, we go from there, they start inventing. And we should point out that you're actually the man behind several very clever inventions, as I mentioned, award-winning ones. So there's the, the, the riot shield that police use, a specific type of riot shield. Yeah, I won the British Inventor of the Year that, that year for the riot shield. And also uh, a, a kitchen, a bit of kitchen equipment the as well? A potato groover, two of which are at Buckingham Palace. And, and there's several others as well? There's lots of others. Yeah. So is it easy or is it difficult to teach people teach children how to have that eureka moment. They have that eureka moment. You know, they were given a week and a half to come up with the inventions. They come up with 11. We chose two of the best ones and they're absolutely brilliant. Well, perhaps we can uh, have a chat to Elise and Naomi over here. Hello, guys. Now, this is your invention here. Do you want to tell me about it? This is called Thermo Bear. It comes as a collectibles, but this main character is Wendy Warm. Inside, each bear and each toy is inserted with a thermometer. Oh, I see. Which, when your child hugs, it will test your child's temperature. That seems very clever. Um, and this is for younger children that don't like getting their temperature taken in their ear or their mouth. So when they, when the child hugs the bear, that it will test the temperature of their underarm and 
without them realising it would test their temperature. What a great idea. Well done. Is, is this more fun than being at school? Yeah. Okay, I won't tell your teachers. I won't tell your teachers. Bill, that's a great idea and there must be so many, but if someone's watching at home and they've got their own idea for an invention, what should they do with it? Where do they take it? There are inventors clubs around, so just look on Google and you'll find some inventors clubs. But for children, I'm afraid, that's why I started by it. There aren't any. But if you want me to come to you, I'll come. All right, Bill Curry, thanks for talking to us. Thanks, guys, for speaking to us. You're watching Swipe. Later on the show, Audi partner, steer clear of this at 150 miles per hour. That's and the rest of this week's best technology news. Now, it's been seven months since the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 and a new search off the coast of Western Australia is using sonar technology. Jonathan Samuels has been to Fremantle to find out more. I'm on board Go Phoenix, one of three ships that is searching for MH370. We're in Fremantle at the moment, just outside Perth, and very soon this ship is going to head out and carry on its search. And this is the first time journalists have been on board to have a look at some of the equipment. This is Evan. Hi, Evan. Hello. This is uh, an incredible piece of technology, isn't it? One of the world's most advanced sonar pieces of kit. Talk me through it. Well, uh, this is the uh, SO Hydrospherics uh, process. Um, it is a deep toe side scan sonar system um, down here on the lower section of it. This is actually the sonar array uh, with the electronics bottle. Um, it has benefits over traditional side scan where this one has a very, very large range scale, but it also has a very high resolution. Um, it is capable of seeing uh, objects down to 10 centimeters, um, so you know soda cans and so forth, out to ranges that we are collecting right now is a kilometer of each side of this vehicle. And this is towed behind the ship Correct. Uh, on a very long cable. How deep down can it go? Uh, this vehicle is rated to 6,000 meters. Um, right now, with the operation we are currently doing, um, we're usually in slightly less than that. We're averaging you know, 3,000 to 4,000 meters of water. And our cable out that we're actually letting out to get to that depth is about 6,000 meters, plus or minus a couple hundred. And of course, at the back of your mind, as you're on board this ship, are the families and the friends of all those that is, uh, that is one of the uh, reasons that we do this is that, uh, yeah, it, does, it brings a lot of closure to people and, uh, you know, we have the technology and the ability and, and we're very privileged to be able to bring that to bear on this, you know, this tragic incident and hopefully uh, we can resolve something out of it. You're watching Swipe. Still to come, we refuse to let sleeping dogs lie in our games review. But first, here's a roundup of the tech stories you might have missed this week. Who remembers Marty McFly on his hoverboard in Back to the Future 2? A personal favourite movie of mine? Well, look at this. A US firm's created a board that uses magnets to hover over metal surfaces. You could get your own for just over £6,000. The current prototype can hover at heights of 3 centimetres. Audi's been testing out its new car at the Hockenheim circuit in Germany, but this one's a bit different. There's no driver. The RS7 can reach speeds of 150 miles per hour and uses GPS and 3D cameras to navigate its way around the track. It managed to clock a lap time of just over two minutes. Dating app Tinder is creating a premium service to try and make money from its huge collection of users. The software lets you swipe through images of single people around you. And despite being virtually ad-free, it's valued at around £620 million. It's thought the new features could let users connect with people who are further away. And now time for our games review. And this week we've got a whole load of action, so we've thrown in a bit of Disney to soften the blow. Who likes Disney? Me! Here's gaming guru Guy Cocker. Cereza! Bayonetta 2 is a sequel to a game that came out around five years ago, so this sequel has been a long time coming. You're essentially playing as this female witch uh, called Bayonetta, and she can link together punches, kicks, and uh, gunfire in a really kind of balletic fashion. And it's just one of those games that's really fun to play, it's easy to pick up, but very difficult to master. If I have any problem with the game, it's this sort of weird Japanese aesthetic and its politics. This, this woman who looks like the uh, Sarah Palin, the uh, US uh, politician. Now it's time to be naughty. 
her hair is her outfit and her outfit she keeps losing her clothes and it's just it, the, the sexual politics of it are very strange and it just feels a little bit gross to me and a bit weird but apart from that it's genuinely one of the best action games uh, of the year and one of the best games of the year overall I'd say. he will draw his last breath before me Earlier this year, Microsoft dropped the Kinect uh, motion sensor from its Xbox One. Previously, all of its consoles would come with the Kinect sensor, and now it's kind of ditched the platform. So uh, Fantasia and Music of All could be the last sort of pure Kinect game that comes out on the platform. It's essentially uh, a game where you conduct music using your body, so you have to uh, make shapes or punch the air when the music is happening on screen, and it's all done through the Disney sort of Fantasia visuals, which are very appealing, and uh, especially for, uh, for a younger audience. But um, I actually enjoyed it, particularly in co-op, uh, and if you're a fan of that Disney Fantasia and the Disney um, sort of universe, then I would recommend it. <laughs> Borderlands is credited in the gaming world as creating this kind of massively multiplayer uh, loot-based shooter which was picked up this year by Destiny, which is the most expensive video game ever made. Now, I actually prefer the Borderlands series because it's got these colourful graphics, it's got great characters, and actually quite rare for video games. It's really genuinely very funny, and you can kind of tell that by the fact that it's called Borderlands, the pre-sequel. It's a bit of a jokey title. It's set in space, so there's low gravity and there's a lot more guns than before, but apart from that, it's pretty much business as usual for the Borderlands franchise, which you can tell because it's being released on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, which are the sort of last-gen consoles, not the current ones. Uh, but if you're a fan of the Borderlands series, it's got more of the things that you expect from that series, like I say, that, uh, that great humour and great characters. And if you're playing it in four-player co-op, which is really how it was designed to be played, so get online with your friends, it really is a lot of fun. Sleeping Dogs was one of the best open world action games that was released on the last generation of consoles, the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. And it's in that genre, uh, same genre as Grand Theft Auto V. Um, the difference with this is that it's sort of a nod to Hong Kong action cinema. So you're playing as an undercover cop uh, who's getting dragged into the criminal underworld in Hong Kong. And it's kind of a nod to those films like Infernal Affairs and even some of the sort of classic Bruce Lee martial arts flicks. The only thing I would say is that it's coming out, this or this definitive edition, is coming out on Xbox One and PlayStation. 4, so the graphics are massively improved. It contains all of the downloadable content that was previously available for the game, so it's this really, really big package. But if, for whatever reason, you missed uh, Sleeping Dogs the first time around, it's well worth picking up, and uh, it's actually available at a budget price as well. Well, that's it for this week, but don't forget, you can stay up to date with all the latest tech stories on Sky News for iPad, our smartphone apps, and skynews.com. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>